Um, okay, so hello everyone. First of all, I would like to say thank you for being here. This is the presentation of our final project, SME Shift Engine, the path to sustainable management. This is our group, Juliana, uh, Monica and Stephanie, sorry, and Pedro. <laughs> okay, we are going to follow this index here, introduction, learning journey, model, and next steps. So the context, why we decided to make our final project about SMEs? Well, first of all, if you uh, look worldwide and also in the European context, the most part of the companies are small and medium-sized companies. For example, in Spain, around 98% of the companies are small, so we can conclude that they are the main source of employment and also that they contribute for the GDP of the country. Okay, so in terms of the challenge, we try to understand why the, the SMEs are not looking to CSR as something that can benefit them. And we could, uh, through our research, we understood that uh, SMEs don't understand the concept of CSR. They have a problem in understanding the concept. Actually, they look at the manuals and they see the manuals that are only focused for big corporations. So they have problems in dealing with the technical language and also to implement uh, within their business. Also, there's another thing. Because they are small and medium companies and because of the crisis, especially here in Spain, they are dealing with the problem that, which is like the daily survival. So they look at CSR as something that it's going to be expensive to invest. Okay, so this is the reason why we decided to come up with our model. We believe that it's going to be a model that it's innovative, it's going to be visual, and we believe that we are going to overcome the problem of the technical language. So we are going to change some of the terms uh, to an easier language. And this is the added value. We believe that in terms of awareness and knowledge, we believe that we are going to help them to understand the concept of CSR. In terms of support, in our model, we try to make like them to use the, uh, the model as a way to, for a self-assessment, okay? So we're not trying to overwhelm them saying that you are right, you are wrong. They just check what they are doing and they see their own opportunities to develop. And in terms of network, well, we are trying to, to help them to create like a exchange of ideas among them. Okay, through a forum and differentiation, we are trying to help them to understand that CSR can be seen as a comparative advantage. Okay, and now uh, Stephanie is going to talk about the limitations of our project. Okay. So we want to expose also our limitation of our project. So the first time, time we had few time to, to do this project because we, we based on a bottom bottom-up approach or methodology, that means interviews, online survey, contact, and SMEs. And then we, we had to, to, do, to make a research and finally to design a model. However, we, we achieve a prototype that will, you will see after. Then the poor collaboration. As we had few time, we decided to contact uh, association like CEPIMES, the Spanish uh, SMEs association, to ask some help to contact or to facilitate directly the contact, the direct contact uh, of SMEs. But and other association, not only CEPIMES. But we didn't uh, receive any answers. And then the result is a small scope of investigation. So we had only two case studies, and the online survey we launched uh, through uh, EOI. Uh, we know that 200, uh, more than 200 people have seen our survey, but only six people answer the, the questionnaire. However, we think that we have enough uh, information or conclusion that we can base our model. And we had a good, very good collaboration with uh, two case study. It's uh, two SMEs, Macedonia in Madrid, a fruit bar, and Entremais, a medium hotel in La Manga in Murcia. Then the online questionnaire, due to the data uh, protection law, we didn't have the contact detail of the people who answered the online uh, survey. So we didn't, uh, or we couldn't contact back these SMEs to ask more detail, or we didn't know, or we didn't have the information of, for example, the size or the kind of uh, SMEs. And finally, the model itself, itself sorry, uh, due to the lack of graphic design and IT knowledge, uh, we made 
we only made a design template with the content, but with uh, the help of a friend, uh, we we design and we create a prototype. Next. So that's our learning journey. We base our process is based on the U theory from Otto Scharmer. So this theory is composed of uh, the three phases: observe, reflect, and act. So uh, I will explain the three phases in each. Uh, faces you will see some picture who which reflect uh, CSR activities in our 2K study and other picture of us <laughs> during this process. Please. So the observe, we started to create a fishbone analysis, uh, thinking about driver that uh, SMEs, uh, CEOs can implement uh, CSR. Then we made a desk review on doc documented research on CSR and, and SMEs in Europe, in Spain, because our project is based on Spain. Then we made the case studies in Macedonia. We went in the place, we interviewed the CEOs, and we observed what they have already with the uh, CSR activities. Here it's, a pro for example, the biodegradable products, factory uh, products. And here it's in Termais. we went in Murcia. Uh, we interviewed. <laughs> we went. <laughs> we we went and we interviewed the CEOs and other people uh, um, working there, and we observed. So before you you had a bathroom uh, specialized for the disabled people, for example, and then the second and you have also the online survey, of course, from the uh, AOE. Then the, the second one is reflect. So we got all the information. We did the data analysis. Here in school, we thought about uh, the content of the model and the design. And all the, our, our conclusion of all this journey until there, uh, we enter on the third phase is the act. And the act is the prototype of the model. That's the uh, image. And my colleague uh, Mo uh, Juliana and Monica will explain the prototype in detail. So, as Steph was mentioning and as Pedro mentioned before, some CSR is a difficult issue for SMEs. They don't understand, they don't see the benefit or the impact that they could have. If they implement it, they only see it as big corporation things. So we wanted to make something that was more accessible, easy for them to understand and in their language, so to say. So we decided that we, went, we were going to base our model in the five sigma capitals from a sustainable management, which I think we all know, but I'm gonna repeat them. They are <laughs> the financial capital, the human, the social, the manufactured, and the natural capital because we think this whole capitals really represent what a sustainable business is if they are implemented right. We came up with a sixth capital because we think governance is also an issue that has to be taken into account. So we gave it the name governance capital. And we think it's uh, because the management has to be involved since the beginning and throughout the whole process of CSR because otherwise then it, would, it won't be sustainable. So that's why we decided to have it like that. We also think that the model has to be a, se a series of self-reflective questions that, as Pedro mentioned before, companies throughout the whole process in each capital will answer some easy questions to see where they are, what they are doing. This is not to give them a grade or to say you're better than the other or to compare. This is just to know where they are, the opportunities they have. And to make it easier, we decided to change the name CSR because we think, because it's confusing for them. We already know. So we decided to name Engage Management, as you can see there. We think it takes the whole process together and it makes it easier for them to understand what we're really talking about. And they can see that they can have small actions in each of the capitals because we were seeing that CSR, some SMEs understood it like only social and through the outside, I mean not inside, they didn't think about the employees at all, only donations and community. Others went the other way around and there was only natural capital. So it was only about the environment. So we decided to name it like that, to make it a whole picture to them to understand. 
So, and we also changed some of the names of the capitals inside the model to make it easier for them to understand. You will see, Monica will explain it later. So here we have, this is the platform when they come in. They will see this is the home page. You have here the instructions on how to use the model. And you will have also a possibility to upload videos and to see experiences of other SMEs and people talking about CSR. Also, you will have the, the news feed and the forum where you can have an open chat with other SMEs and other CEOs that have doubts and concerns because we wanted to make it easy for them. There is no platform for them to communicate with each other, so we wanted them to share experiences there. They can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. We have already an account. And now we're going to show you a really short video of the CEO of Entre Mares, Alberto Ingles. He's going to explain why it is important to implement CSR and NSME. It's in Spanish, sorry. competitivo en momentos de crisis. Esa es mi experiencia. Esa ventaja competitiva, alargada en el tiempo, hace que pueda supervivir mejor en estos momentos de tanta incertidumbre. En segundo lugar, es la imagen de marca. Todas estas políticas de sostenibilidad, responsabilidad social, eh, tienen mucho eh, énfasis a nivel local. Y como se dice popularmente, piensa local y la clase global. En tercer lugar, se generan objetivos que gustan mucho a los equipos y conexionan mucho a los equipos humanos. Y es evidente que cuando un equipo se siente unido con los comunes y deseados, se convierte en mucho más eficaz y mucho más eficiente. Para mí son los tres motivos principales. So that's an example of the sharing experience that I was talking about. We wanted to make it easy, as I mentioned, so they only have to register with a username and a password, and then they will have their record there every time so they can compare each year how they are doing if they want to. Also, we wanted to make it for the CEOs and the owners of the SMEs because we think, as I mentioned before, they are the ones that have to be on the center of the implementation. Otherwise, it won't be last, it won't last. So now, Monica will explain the whole model. Okay. So here you can see the whole model with the six capitals and stakeholders in the center. I wanted to say that we chose the engine as a figure because we think it reflects movement and therefore symbolizes progress. So uh, I'm going to guide you through the whole uh, model, but we're going to see as a detailed example only natural capital. So the idea is that you would go into each of the engines and have a brief description of what is natural capital in this case. And then going into we chose here uh, five aspects as like the main issues for natural capital. As you can see, it's waste management, natural environment, water management, energy efficiency, and green products. And what I would like to highlight is, for example, that it's everything is visual. So you can enter and just with seeing the images, you would have an idea of what are you, uh, what you will find there. And we have two types of questions. Here you can only see one, but I'll, see, I'll show you the other one later. And so, for example, for water management, you would have this type of actions that you can implement. And as you can see here, we have like hyperlinks that would take you to other web pages where you can find more information about certain topics. So we're going to show you an example on green products for certificate products. If you would like to see more, you go into the, the hyperlink and it would take you into Ecolabel Index. Then going next. Okay, here is Assets Capital, that stands for Manufacturer Capital. And going in, we have technology and innovation. And as you can see here, or don't worry, <laughs> I'll show you in the next one. Uh, here is management that stands for governance capital. And then here, the, as you can see here, these are the other types of questions where you have blank space, so you can answer and give all the details you want. And for financial capital, we chose wealth distribution, supply chains, and efficiency as the main issues. For community capital, that stands for social. 
We chose partnerships, dialogue, impacts, and donations. And for our labor, that stands for human capital. We chose a working environment, training, recruitment, human rights, and life work balance. Okay, so the idea is when you start, when, when you finish filling all the, the capitals, you would have to go into stakeholders and list the stakeholders that are the most important to your company and that have a relation with all the capitals. So you would go in there and have a blank space to list all your stakeholders so you can have a clear image of who are the most important people, organizations, institutions, etc. And okay, how the, uh, the model throws out the results, we decided that it would be a good idea to highlight the areas of opportunity. So the only thing this model is telling you is your opportunities. And we're like not grading anyone. So as you can see here, they're highlighted in red and in yellow, the areas of opportunity for this example that we chose. So here, this company is specifically is already working in dialogue and in partnerships, but has an area of opportunity in, in, in delivering uh, answers to their impacts on social and environmental issues. And uh, with donations, for example, they are only doing money donations, but they can do in-kind sponsorship volunteering. And as the result of the whole model, what we did is to clearly visualize uh, the different, yeah, well, where you are acting more or where you have more areas of opportunity. So the rusty engines symbolizes those capitals where you have more areas of opportunity to act. The normal ones that are community and labor symbolizes the ones that are balanced between the activities already in place and the areas of opportunity. And the ones that are sh shiny symbolizes the ones in, uh, in which the SME is currently acting more. So this would uh, make you have a whole image of your company that it's also uh, a, that you are able to compare it on a time basis because you can always come back to the platform and do the exercise again. So then you will have two engines showing you your progress. And okay, I think that's it for, for the model. And now Pedro is going to explain what are the next steps for our project. Okay, <laughs> so what are the next steps? Um, because we want this model to be scalable. We believe that, first of all, we need to think about the funding and also the promotion. In terms of funding, we are going to use like the crowdfunding, donations, and online advertisement. And in terms of promotion, we thought about the social network, the word of mouth, entrepreneur networks, and online tools. To conclude, and this is the most important, is that what you saw is just a draft. So w what we want to do in the future is to adapt this model by sector and size, because small and medium companies that are diverse, they are in different sectors, agriculture, restaurants, whatever, and in terms of size, because some of them are bigger than others, obviously. So in the future, we think that um, there's a great opportunity to develop this model, and we're just waiting for someone or for us to develop it. <laughs> and that's all. Thank you for your attention. And <laughs> If you have questions and comments, please. I love the presentation, but I want to say that when you first proposed the, the subject for 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 this um, project for, for the project, I thought it was like, my God, this is very challenging. There's not enough time, and it's going to be very difficult to do something creative. Because there's a lot, a lot of efforts already put into you know, creating something that adds value. And I'm really surprised by the way you have addressed it, by this journey that has been amazing, like the effort you have put into getting as much information as you put, and you have mentioned the challenges, and they're really, really there. I mean, you, you, you work very well on the, on the questionnaire, and you put a lot of effort into getting people to answer, and for me, People not answering, and someone not answering is already a piece of information, so it's useful. Then all the reflection you put on 
what you can do around this this problem, and and then all the creativity you have put into into designing something that I think is very useful. So apart from that, I and mean, sorry, maybe I was a little bit long, but um, I would like you to tell uh, tell us a little bit more about your experience in in interviewing and 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 leaving the experience of the SMEs you have visited, because you mentioned that you are going to the Maris and. You, you add one methodology into the research that was like living journey, like going really deepening in, uh, to understand living the, the everyday life of an SME that is trying to apply CSR and what your experience was there because I think it could be useful. Well, quite quickly because we have a uh, few time. But um, for example, we went to Macedonia, and what was interesting is that um, although they are like a, a small company, they were doing lots of things there. And they didn't recognize as something as CSR. They had like the book crossing. The, for them, it wasn't anything book crossing. They had all, they just thought about fair trade, and that was all. Fair trade and some products that are more ecological, but that was it. And they were always saying, well, big corporations, they can do it better. Telephonic, in this case, they can do it better. I can't do anything. So I think that they don't have the notion of their potential. I don't know if you want to share other opinions. No, just to say for Entremares, it was also really surprising going into a hotel chain where like processes are more complex and really getting that they are really doing what they're interested in, interested in. It's in their core business, like 100%. So they're taking actions all the way they can, and the, the two CEOs are really committed. So that was really shocking for us. We, did, we didn't think to find an SME that was like so developed, and that was like also a motivation for us that we say if they can do it, every SME has a chance to do it, so that was good. Mm -hmm. And the other aspect, it was when we interviewed uh, both Macedonia and, and Entremares, they, they mentioned the lack of support because they're interesting in SRSI and they think it's the future and the change, but they, they do, don't know how to, how to do. They compare with the big corporation because for them, CSI is for big corporation and they, they, they feel that they, there is no support for the SMEs. It's only for, there is no uh, recogni uh, how do you say? Recogn recognition, there is no uh, support, they don't know how to find the information, uh, how we know, the, they, I don't know if, yes, yeah, the ISO, um, yeah, the ISO guideline, and, uh, and they know, but the other manual, they, they didn't know. And, uh, they won't read this manual of 80 pages. So it was, yeah, we, we find a, a lack of, of super interest, but a lack, a lack of, of knowledge or how to, how to do something. Well, just quick. I think that's why we proposed the, the forum, for example, because they wanted to share experiences with each other, but they can't. They don't have a place to do that. So it was interesting to see that they actually want to do something, they want to ask other people, but they don't know where. Sepimes is not really helpful. So they wanted to do things, but for them, it was interesting to see that they actually are really motivated. It's just hard for them. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. The two things I really liked, um, first of all, the, the uh, reflections on the methodology. I think it's really nice to know how you came to the conclusions and, and how you worked. I can see Guadalupe's influence with the, <laughs> the U model there, <laughs> definitely, but it's very nice to see that, and also for sharing the difficulties and challenges and limitations. It's important to do that. And secondly, something else that I think you've really got to be congratulated on, making the language understandable. You know it's m one of my obsessions, the kind of jargon we use around CSR and development and, and the way that you've taken the capitals and also the idea of CSR into engage management I think is really attractive and so well done for that. 
Um, your, your argument for doing this was that many SMEs are overwhelmed by the, the enormous quantity of materials out there and it's, it's almost too much for them. And um, so your model is it intended to, to make it much easier for them to access material and, and information about this. Uh, I still think it could be slightly overwhelming seeing all the different cogs and, and where to go. And I'm wondering if you've thought about or considered the idea of having maybe a simple opener or, or entry point or pointing um, SMEs to ways they could just choose a bite size. I understand they have to have an overview of what it all involves, but is there a way they could be directed to, to um, something tangible that they could do quickly and easily so it, the whole framework wasn't too overwhelming? Mm -hmm. well, I'm not sure. Uh, we thought about like several ways of presenting, for example, the questions. And uh, one idea we had at, at the beginning was just a questioner. But then we realized that what was attractive, especially, was the visual part. So trying to resolve that in the instructions at the beginning in the home page, we said that you should focus on the area that is most important to you. Maybe an SME enters and just goes into natural capital. And for us, that's okay, because what we want to do at the beginning is just showing them what's, what are the opportunities. So if they go and say, okay, I'm interested in natural capital, but I see there are five more where I can do something, for us, that's okay. So yeah, we explore like several possibilities on how to present the, the information, but we decided that like something that was really visual was the best way to do it. And when we interviewed the, in the online questionnaire and the people, uh, we asked what do you think or what, or what do you want to see in the model? So we, with the answer of these people, not only SMEs, we interviewed other, other people. So visual, it was the most important, image, visual. Uh, dynamic so that's a, so we, we decided to base on something visual and the question in each capital we think that it's basic or generic question because our intention is to start from the beginning from the bottom no it's to to reach most of people and even the people who didn't know about or, or who are not interested in CSR or in kind of thing so only uh, direct uh, and easy question that they can make every day or they can see every day. And then the answer or the, uh, the question is like, oh, okay, in my company we have, I don't know, light. Okay, so we, if we change the light, we can reduce our cost or some, that's an example. Yeah. Sorry. Ah. Yeah. No, no. I'd, um, I'd for, to start off with, or congratulations, considering all the hindrance that we, uh, uh, you were, uh, that you suffered, you did an excellent job, and I love the, the, the title and the subject, Shift Engine, SME Shift Engine, so CSR, something that we are very familiar with, but most, NGO, uh, most SMEs really have no clue what it is, they actually do it, they don't even realize, and this Shift Engine really liberates, really allows people to go in a different uh, direction. And then I, I love your use of your U theory for yourselves, you know, this observing, reflecting, and acting. I think it would be very interesting to take companies to do that. So they can do the model, they can do that, you know, their questions and come this excellent visual, this way you have opportunities, but actually accompanying them through this process would actually multiply the effect, the change that these organizations will actually take place. Uh, so that's something that can be implemented there. I like the fact that the platform is useful, you know, the indicators very clearly, this news feed that gives it the liveliness and the forum where they can exchange ideas is very, very good. And, uh, and also I like that, that you're highlighting opportunities as opposed to grading, which is not really that useful. You want to just quickly, as an SME, go work and react, work and I do something, and it goes very strongly with that idea. Uh, maybe just one evolution is uh, you see where you are now, and in one year, you can see where you've actually, after this, you do the analysis again, you can see where you have been, so you can really measure. Measuring is always a good uh, fact to see how much better you got, so just one, one suggestion. And one question I had is, uh, there's one part where you link to useful information. Do you have ideas on how to collect that information? Wow. Do you want to perhaps involve the same SMEs to collect the information? Where does that wealth of best of information actually come from? 
Well, that's actually a good idea. We <laughs> thought, <laughs> yeah, we thought in the forum. <laughs> no, no, we thought with the forum they can actually exchange ideas and exchange links and things that they already use that maybe other companies can use. So in the forum, that's a good idea. And also, well, in the next phases, in what Pedro explained, we already, we thought that, okay, we need someone to be updating the model all the time because the idea is to be updated not only to links, but also to the law, to the European Union Commission, anyth anything that comes out, it has to be there for them to understand. So yeah, we need someone to be there like updating the model. We thought about it, but yeah. yeah on the only thing, it's because we we would like it's that the the use useful of this m or the use of the model is the dynamic. So the SMEs should go there quick and see the information, the updating information directly. So the ideal <laughs> process is someone who can uh, follow all the information related to SMEs and to put and yes, so that's the most important. As a speaker here, but it was really good. Yeah. He's coming next yeah. week, He's actually. Coming? Maybe okay. we should invite yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, there are two, no? Yeah. I'll invite you. Yeah, well, yeah, we just asked him if he can, yeah, to answer those basic questions, thinking about he is speaking to other businessmen. So, because we, that's what we want to reflect there. So, the idea is also that any SME that goes into the web page could up upload their own their own experience to share it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah.